In this session we're going to be examining one of the more creative flame effects tools available in Smoke. This is the Bump Displace. To get to the flame effects tools you need to select the pop-up menu and choose the flame effects option. Bump Displace requires two inputs, a source image and a displacement map. They can be the same image or different images depending on the result that you want to get. I'll choose the Bump Displace button in the menu and the cursor turns red. The red cursor indicates that it requires the source footage that will have the displacement map applied to it. For this example I'm going to use a photo that is 1920 by 1080 at 10 bit. I'll select the image on the left hand corner of the clip and the cursor will then turn green. The green color indicates that the tool is requiring a displacement map. I'll select the same image as the displacement map and the cursor will then turn white. By clicking anywhere on the desktop this will launch us into the Bump Displace module. As the tool is aptly named it creates bump displacements on a source image. This is not to be confused with 3D displacement available inside the Action 3D compositor. 3D displacement in action changes the physical shape of your object whereas bump displace creates distortions on the surface level of an image. The other thing to point out about bump displace is that it is designed for maximum precision so what you see is what you're going to get. This is all coupled with GPU acceleration for fast and interactive results. The first thing you'll notice about the bump displace is its simplicity. You have a widget in the center of the image which is a light source. Simply by dragging it around the image it will create various bump displacement mapping. Now the interface has been divided into various sections and the first section we'll have a look at is the bumps section. The minimum and maximum sliders allow you to control the threshold of the bump displacement on the lighter and darker parts of the image. So you could have bump displacement in the shadows of an image and not in the highlights or however you would like it to be displaced. The other slider is the bump height. This controls the density of the bump thickness on the image. In other words it creates the bump imprint on the screen. What is really cool is that you can work in positive as well as negative values which creates different bump effects. This is definitely worth playing around with. In addition to this you also have the bump softness to smooth bump displacements. A zero softness tends to give you rough texture effects whereas increased softness tends to give you a more liquefied look. The second section of bump displace is the light controls. Here you have the typical transforms of a light to position it in X, Y and Z. And depending where the light is moved it will also give you different effects. What is really useful is this scale slider located next to the transformation controls. Now this does not make the light bigger. What the scale slider does is that it controls the precision of the transformation adjustments. In other words you can control whether or not small changes to X, Y and Z will have a great impact or little impact to the result being created by the module. An example of this is if I was to set the Z position to its absolute minimum and then I set the scale value also to its absolute minimum you can see that as I adjust the Z position the effects are very very subtle. If I set the scale back to the default of 1 and now I adjust the Z position you can see how quickly the image now reacts to the light. I'll just reset the Z position back to its default value by holding down Control Alt on the keyboard and clicking on the slider. This will reset the channel and remove any keyframes. The shaded slider is the intensity of the light itself and the ambient slider is the overall ambient light in the scene. Now remember not to be afraid to play with large numbers. Let's say I push the ambient light into a very high negative value I get a silhouette looking effect. This could be smoothed out further to create a liquid effect. In this case the changes in the lighting give the appearance that the displacement has been separated from the source image. This could be processed out as a compositing texture or even a motion graphic. Finally, 
If we undo these settings, the light also has color controls where you can mix positive as well as negative values to shade and even grade your result. So far we've looked at the bump controls, the light controls and now the image also has its own texture controls. You can control its gain value to react against the light in the shot. You can also control the surface shininess as well as specular reaction to the light in the scene. Once again, playing around with these values is quite important because you can make your image look totally different from the default settings. I'll reset the module one last time and I'll give a really high value to the height of the bump displacement. The last section is the RGB distortion sliders. They can be used to start pushing and pulling the various colors on the edges of the bump displacement. Here I encourage you to really push high values to get a result. Just by playing with these sliders you can achieve different types of looks like a chrome effect for example. So there you have it. Ultimately the bump displace tool adds another creative tool into the flame effects toolset in smoke. For quick and flexible bump displacements this tool is really easy. Using the GPU acceleration as well as large images this is no problem at all for the all-in-one creative finishing software. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.